Welcome to one of the most listened to music news podcasts in the world, SGNP, with your host, Darren Sutherland. Join us as we talk with industry leaders, artists, and entertainers about their faith, family, and careers. This is information you will not find anywhere else on radio, web, or in a magazine, but only firsthand on SGNP. Before we start today's show today, I want to thank our great new sponsor, MyPillow. That's right, MyPillow. They sent me one of those, Mike Lindell and the guys did, and I've been sleeping on it for a couple of weeks now, and I've never slept better. Hey, I've got a huge and busy schedule. Not only do I do the show, but we run an advertising agency. We help other podcasters with their shows throughout the country. We're constantly talking to folks, going to concerts, so my sleep is very important to me. So thanks to MyPillow, and remember, it's got a 10-year warranty guarantee, 60 day money back guarantee. And yeah, you see my pillow in stores like Walmart and Walgreens, but you can only get the premium pillows by calling my pillow directly. So get grab you one of those premium pillows, call this number right here. 1-800-338-2330. 1-800-338-2330. Reference the code SGNP when you talk to them and say, hey, I want that premium pillow that Darren on SGNP has. It's that simple. They'll sell it to you, and it'll make life a whole lot better. So if you're having trouble sleeping, call my pillow today, 1-800-338-2330. Use the code SGNP or go to their website, MyPillow.com, and check them out. Hey, make sure you tell them SGNP sent you. And welcome once again to SGMP Southern Gospel News Podcast. Darren Sutherland here with you as always. Today again, my co-host from Sevierville, Tennessee, up in Dollywood, the great Arthur Rice of the Kingdom Heirs. Arthur, how you doing, my bud? Doing great, doing great. Finally seeing some sunshine. So, I, mean, I heard last week, I seen some videos last week of the rainfall Y'all had it, Dollywood. Is the building still there? Did somebody get washed away in a river? I mean, well, it looked like it there for a little for a little bit. I tell you, we had a just cloud burst basically, uh, but uh, you know, we we there's some water damage, and we had a little bit. We actually had a little bit in the Hall of Fame. We had a little bit of flooding, but it's you know they've got we got Service Pro to come in. They took care of everything, got us all dried out, and we're ready to go. But uh, but yeah, boy. I tell you, sometimes, you know, it's just the way it is. You know, it's just, it just rains on the just and the un. <laughs> it rains on the just. Well, let me tell you what. Up there at the top of the park, the videos I saw coming off the hill where those scary roller coasters are that I wouldn't get on, I just not that I'm scared of them, but I just don't do roller coasters like that. I'm just telling you because it goes upside down. But anyway, it looked like a river was coming down that hill. And Yeah, uh, it, came down, it came down the creek and came into the pond. And mm-hmm. then it overflowed the pond, and then it was kind of flowing in down, down through the the walkway and down to the next pond. And uh, of course, it didn't have anywhere to go. It just rained so hard; it just didn't have anywhere to go. And so, uh, but it's it's good. Everything's good. Back to, back to normal. Well, great, great. Glad everything's going up. Y'all run a first class operation up there, anyway. So, well, what else would somebody expect? Hey, today we're going to be just talking me and you, and we're going to be talking about lead singers, and we're going to be talking about lead singers from the past, the present, and the otherwise. But before we start talking about lead singers, I want to tell everybody: make sure you go to our Facebook page. Southern Gospel News Podcast. Check it out. You can always find information. We've even got an instructional video out now on how to download the podcast. Do you see that yet, Arthur? I think I sent it to you. Yeah. I don't know if you... And it's, yeah. it's it's pretty simple, is it not? It is. It, very, it really is. It really is. And, it, and it's, it's it's not complicated at all. So, you know, if I, Lord, if I can do it, anybody can. That's right. That's right. You know, we talk about lead singers, and when you look at lead singers, Arthur, and you've been a lead singer your whole career thereabouts, I'm sure they made you sing baritone and even had to sing tenor from time to time and maybe handed you a loaded mic made you sing bass if somebody wasn't there. You did what you had to do to get to get the job done, okay? That's right. What does it take to be a good lead singer? And who set the standard pretty much in the gospel music era as a as lead singers when it when when the the music started well i tell you uh, jim hamill i guess put it the best 
um, for me, uh, you know, people they ask him, you know, what, why did you decide to be a lead singer? And it's where the action's at. And, you know, everybody loves to hear the tenors, and they love the tenors, and they love the bass. And uh, but right where then the that's where the action's at right there. It's kind of like being a first baseman. You're always you're in every play, right? And uh, you know that's uh, that's what I love about to, about singing lead. You know, you're always in the in the mix. You're always in the middle of it going on. And I, you know, it depends on. I think a lot of it depends on. You know, the, most of the time, the lead singer is the one that kind of, you know, he calls the program kind of. Mm-hmm. Set up everybody and does the talking that that sort of thing, uh, and but it's not always that way. Um, you know, you've got uh, Ivan Barker was one of the greatest lead singers ever in Gold City, and he didn't talk that much, really. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you have two different kind of uh, there. There actually is two different kind of um, areas for that. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't think Jake talked as much as Hovey did no? from the piano. Hovey no. talked. Far more than Jake ever did. Right, if you, if you right. think back to the old days with the Statesman, yeah. does the lead singer make the song, or does the song make the lead singer? Well, you've got to have somebody that can communicate that song. Um, you know, songwriters. A lot. It's kind of changed a little bit over the over the years, where you you see a lot more songwriters out. In, in mainstream singing. Um, but, you know, used to, you didn't really hear the songwriters. Most of the time, you know, they wrote the songs and then somebody else sang. Right. And uh, in the and you didn't have that many singers that were songwriters. Uh, it's kind of flipping, you know, a little bit. You've got a lot of singers that are songwriters now. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, years ago, it, it really wasn't that way. And so... You would have, uh, you know, the songwriters needed somebody to deliver, the, to be able to deliver the message and to be able to communicate that song. Uh, and so you, you have to make that song yours. Um, and you have to, you know, it has to be, uh, it has to be real to you before you can, I think, before you can effectively deliver that song. It I has think, to mean, mean something to you. I think the late Leroy Abernathy, great writer and arranger and piano player and all that good stuff, said it best in one of his works, where if you're not tired of singing something before you sing it, you probably don't know it as well as you should. You're right, yes. So let me, let me ask you this. Who's some of who's you're a great lead singer yourself, Arthur? Always have been. You know, you've been up for numerous awards, won awards, this, that, and another. Who were some of the lead singers you looked up to when you were coming along originally? You know what? I'm gonna let you hold on that thought right there because we got to pay some bills right quick and think about that, and then I'll be right back with you. Is that easy enough? That sounds good. All righty, you're listening to SGMP. We want to welcome our newest sponsor on SGMP, and it's My Pillow. That's right, My Pillow, Mike Lindell, and My Pillow. You've seen them on TV, you've heard them on radio. Now you hear them on podcast. If you've ever had a chance to hear Mike Lindell's story, we're going to get Mike on the show before long. It's a great story. But My Pillow's ten year warranty. Made in the USA. Actually, it's made in Minnesota, the great state of Minnesota. Washable and dryable. Patent interlock filters to adjust to your individual sleep needs. And a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you go to their website, MyPillow.com, and you order anything on the page, you get a special discount when you put in the code SGNP. SGNP is your code, or you can always call them at 1-800-338-2330. That's 1-800-338-2330. I've got a my pillow. I've never I've got the premium edition. I've never slept better. It stays under my head, keeps my big water head locked up at night where I'm not rolling around. Arthur, you got a my pillow too, don't you, my friend? I do. I have one. My wife has her own, and we don't leave the house without it. We so, take it everywhere we go. We have it. Also have the the, the bed cushion too. The uh, 
Uh, we've had it for probably, I don't know, three, four, five years, I guess, and we love it. I'm telling you, I love my pillow. There you go. So you want to support Southern Gospel News Podcast, call my pillow 1-800-338-2330. Use the code SGNP. We get credit every time you use that code, folks. Go to the website, pick something out, mypillow.com. Use that code SGNP. We would sure appreciate it, wouldn't we, Arthur? Absolutely. No doubt. I said to you earlier, Arthur, I said, when you were coming along, who is some of the best lead singers that you looked up to and who's some of the folks you looked up to back in the day? I, you know, I grew up in, in, in the seventies, listening to, to to all the groups coming on. And, and of course, you know, the, the statesmen were always the, the staple and, and, and then, you know, the inspirations, I grew up in North Carolina, so I grew up around the inspirations and the Kingsmen. And uh, you know Troy Burns and, and and Jim Hamill and group you know really listen to those guys and just the, their their uh, command of the stage really uh, just really influenced me a lot. I, there was there were, wasn't anybody in particular that I fashioned myself after. Um, I just was just me. But those, you know, you, I would watch those guys and, and glean from them and take, you know, and make note of what they're doing and how they're singing it and, and uh, you know, how they, how they take command of, of a song and really um, great, great singers. Have you ever noticed that a great lead singer, as good as they are, if that's a word good is, um, but as great as lead singers can be, that sometimes they have somebody on stage with them that sings another part, in particular tenor, that may be better than them, and they have to basically, okay, I'm the lead, but guess what? David Phelps is singing tenor for me, so the greatest singer on the stage ain't the lead singer sometimes. And, you know, I guess the Inspirations had that problem with Archie. I mean, Archie was the Inspirations and still is the Inspirations, as good as the lead singers were, but... How do you handle that? You've sang with some great bass singers and some great tenor singers through through the years. That that's you know their voice kind of monopolized the lead singer, wouldn't you agree? I mean, I don't mean monopolized. I mean just overshadowed it. I mean George Aunt singing bass. Yeah, you know, yeah. as good as Glenn yeah. was at singing lead, Glenn could not sing lead as good as George could sing bass. But together they were a great team. How's a great lead singer? Because a lot of times, you know this, you've been in the industry a long time, lead singers, if they're the MC, they're calling the songs, they're doing this, that, and other. Let's just face it, they they got a tendency to think maybe we're the best. How do you move yourself out that way, Arthur? Because you've sang with some good guys over the years. Well, I think you, you actually said it best when it's together. You know, that's the thing about a quartet is every, everybody brings something different to the table. And... Everybody brings something different to the stage, and everybody does their thing. And that's what makes a good quartet is when you can, everybody can do their thing. And, you know, you can, you know, if you do have one that's stronger or one that's, uh, you know, that really stands out, you know, they stand out when they need to, but the rest of the time, you know, they're, they're kind of in the background and they, they accompany them. You know everybody else that's, that's that, and and they um, uh, make everybody else sound better, and that's that's kind of the way quartets you know really work. And you're right with the inspirations coming on. You know Archie sang actually sang lead mm-hmm. uh, the melody. You know, right. and that's you know that's kind of people people kind of misunderstand that a lot of times. And when when you say lead singer, it's really second tenor is the part, and. Um, you know, it's it's the melody. The lead singer carries the melody most of the time. Now, when you got in the inspirations, Archie carried the melody most of the time. So he was actually singing lead, uh, and and Troy sang a lot of harmony. He sang um, the woman's part, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. But you do, you know, you do have, you know, but you're exactly right. You know, George was such a great bass singer. Now, and Glenn and his right was great. But you put the two of them together, and they were just super. Right. You know, when you when you bring them apart, when you tear them apart, you know they're all good in their own own realm. But you put them together, and it just it really makes them great. If you had to pick, if you were starting a quartet tomorrow, 
okay? And let's not talk about eras and, you know, what, what, what years they were singing, but take someone in their prime and you couldn't, and you were going to own this quartet and you were going to put it on the road, Arthur. Who would you if bring I could in? Pick, pick, pick one. Anybody. Pick anybody. Just one. Pick anybody. Uh, am I picking other parts or lead singer? Just pick a, pick a lead singer and then we'll, we'll, then we'll, we'll, we'll name the other parts in just a minute. We'll build the uh, Arthur Rice All Star Quartet today, maybe. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> who, who, who you take as your lead singer, Arthur? I tell you, Jack Tony was one of the best singers. Yeah. Uh, his tones were just uh, smooth. So, oh, man. Yeah. Smooth, uh, great, great singer, great and, singer. And Jack was a good songwriter too. People, he was. Uh, people he really don't remember was. that, but Jack was a good. One. Jack wrote some great songs. If I had to pick a lead singer and I had to start a quartet, I would probably I'd be one of three, and they're they're all three out today singing today. To me, it would either have to be, and I, and that's why I asked you this question earlier: Is it the song that makes the lead singer? or the lead singer that makes the song. And the three I would probably go with is Ivan Parker, you know, made the song Midnight Cry Famous. Every, every day Greg Day goes to the bank, he needs to thank Ivan Parker for Midnight Cry. <laughs> or is that Chuck that wrote that? Which one is it? Both of them wrote it together. That's, both right. Them, yeah. That's right, yeah. Greg and Chuck Day. Number two, uh, Michael English. I mean, Michael English would bow on my knees, couldn't cry holy, took an older song and done things with it that only a few people can dream of, and it's great. Mm-hmm. And then the last one, just because of his presence, and he was one of those guys that we're talking about being a lead singer that may not have been, he, he probably would have been the best singer in any group he was ever in, except when he was with the Gaither Vocal Band, and that's Guy Penrod. And mm-hmm. you got Mark Lowry singing baritone next to you, and You've got David Phelps singing tenor. I mean, you know, it's kind of it's kind of hard to overshadow either one of those. So, those are those would be mine, Arthur. I mean, yeah. What, what do you think oh, about them guys? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And and here's what made them great. I mean, they were great by themselves, but they would complement everybody else. You know, they were able to kind of back off and and uh, you know they they would complement everybody else. And that's that it really is what makes a good lead singer. It's not whether you're you're great. It's a matter of whether you can make somebody else sound great. If you had advice for these younger groups coming up today, or any group, it doesn't matter if they're young or old. It could be 40 years old or 14. What's your advice for lead singers? I tell you, I think for me, I think in-ear monitors have been the best thing and the worst thing for our music, especially mm-hmm. for quartet music. Because we forget to listen. We forget to listen to each other. It's all about, I, I want to hear more of me. I want to hear myself. I, and, and I get that. I understand that. And it and it has made um, the longevity of a lot of singers because they're not having to scream over top of monitors all the time. You know, and they can hear themselves better. And, and that's the great thing about it. The more bad thing about it is we quit listening to everybody else. You've got to listen to the guys sing beside of you before you can blend, before you can make the harmonies work right, before you can compliment someone else. You have to listen to how they're singing. And I think that's, to me, that is one of the greatest things that our music has kind of lost over the, over the years, is we don't know how to, we can't just stand around a piano and, and sing and blend and make harmonies. It's 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 tough, and, and it's hard to find um it's hard to find that nowadays. Hey, let's pay some more bills. Arthur, when we get right back, we're going to talk about, we're not going to leave the ladies out because we got to talk about female lead singers too. Oh, yeah. Because there's, there's females out there that carry the, carry the weight. And when I tell you who some of my favorite ones are, I think you'll be surprised. Right here on SGNP. SGNP is brought to you by Kia. Join SGNP this summer for the Kia Summer Nights Concert Series, a free concert at select local Kia dealers. The first concert is June 14th with the McCamies at Julio Jones Kia in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Thank God on the mountain. 
It's the Kia Summer Nights Concert Series, starting June 14th with the McCameys at Julio Jones Kia in Tuscaloosa. Part of Kia, America's best value summer event. America loves Kia and gospel music. It's the Kia Summer Nights Concert Series, absolutely free. Brought to you by SGNP and Julio Jones Kia in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, June 14th. And welcome back to SGMP, Darren Sutherland and my co-host from the Kingdom Airs in Sevierville, Tennessee, home of Dollywood, Arthur Rice. Arthur, Hello. we've been talking about these, uh, been talking about uh, lead singers all day long. Of course, you're one of them. You're up for some awards, and I hope folks hear this show. They go and vote for you, Arthur. I'll just be honest with you. How about that? Well, is, is I that appreciate a, that. Is that a good plug? I appreciate that. <laughs> you didn't even pay me for that plug either, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I tell folks, and I don't and I don't say this uh, in a bad way. I you know when I show up in in the singing news charts and that sort of thing and the awards, I, I there's nobody any more surprised than I am because you know I'm not out there in mainstream. I'm not I'm not out there FaceTime with a lot of folks that that vote, and I really appreciate all the people that that remember me uh, because you know they uh, you know a lot of times they only hear me on the radio and, and yeah. or see me on a video or something like that and and because of the you know that we're at Dollywood a lot of times and and uh, I really do appreciate any time anybody votes for me I really do well, I'll tell you what I think. You know, somebody asked me the other day. Well, I'll say this: Michael Booth and I was talking the other day, and Michael said we were talking about tenor singers. And Michael said, well, if I win the award, that's great. But we all know that I'm not the best tenor singer. I'm just the favorite tenor singer. Because until David Phelps' voice gives out, we know who the best tenor singer is. That is true. So anyway, just just cutting up with folks. But it's good to hear you say stuff like that. We told, you know, when we came back from the break, and I want to remind everybody, SGMP and Julio Jones Kia welcomes the McCameys Thursday night, June the 14th, to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Free concert. Come on out there and join everybody that night. Brought to you by Kia and the Kia Summer Concert Series. And also remember July the 8th. Somebody else that's a decent lead singer that we're talking about that we didn't hadn't mentioned, but Jason Crabb is going to be at Carriage Kia in Woodstock, Georgia, on Sunday afternoon, July the eighth at five o'clock for a free concert there. We talked about female lead singer. We're talking about. I said we we're going to come back and talk about female lead singers, Arthur. Female lead singers, man. You, you may tell you who I think who's the most your favorite. Yeah. Who's my uh, most underrated female lead? In all of gospel music, and when I say this, some people are going to be shocked. Okay, who you say? Chris Freeman. Chris Freeman has, is the most underrated female singer in gospel music. I will second that vote. I mean the the fact that she doesn't have more publicity. I was actually talking to some folks in her family. You know, the Cooks are part of her family. They're cousins yes. of Daryl. And I was talking. I said, "Why don't I, I just have never understood?" why folks hadn't gravitated toward Chris. Maybe she just don't self-promote or something. I don't know what it is. But Chris is an awesome female lead singer. She carried the Hensons, which a generation, that generation of the late 70s and late 80s, she carried those guys. I mean, Ronnie was a great writer. Kenny could sing great. But Chris came out of nowhere and just, boom, you know, did, did them a great job. Yeah. So uh, she she's a great lead singer. I tell you, who else is a great lead singer? And she falls into the category of not being the best singer, but she may be able to read a crowd as a lead singer better than any other female that I have ever seen or you've ever seen. Peg McCamey. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, so so those are a couple of uh, some other ones that are unheralded. Um, What's the lady with the Perry sister's name? Diane Gillette. I think that was her name. Yes. Awesome lead singer. Perry yes. sisters were awesome back in the day. And uh, who, who's some of the females that you look to as lead singers and you just sit back and say, well, well, you can't forget Vestal. I mean, for everything people say about the happy Goodmans, Vestal, yeah. Yeah. Vestal yeah. carried the Goodmans. Yeah. I mean, Howard yeah. would well, never get I to mean, cut you, an you, album if it wasn't for Vestal. But anyway. Oh, oh absolutely. I mean, you know. And Johnny Cook did a fine job kind of filling in, but, you know, Vestal, you know, was the, uh, she 
she was it was best you know people, people come to see, it's kind of like going to see squire you don't, you don't care who's with it you just want to see squire that's right <laughs> you just want to see Vestal, you know and the rest of them were, were great but but uh but Vestal's what it made it you know you know we mentioned earlier in the show you mentioned we were talking about great lead singers you mentioned jack tony a lot of folks don't know jack tony you know Jack sang with Tony Brothers and then was with a statesman later in his career. But who are some other lead singers that you've heard through the years that maybe people need to go on YouTube or go back and listen to some albums and check out that maybe people just haven't heard? I tell you a female lead singer that folks ought to go back and listen to, and it's a name not a lot of people have heard of, is you remember the Hoskins family, Angie Hoskins? Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I mean, tremendous, tremendous voice. Who's some folks like that that you saw come through the business? And uh, of course, of course, you know, Smitty was a great singer, yeah. just uh, phenomenal singer. And uh, you know, I encourage people to go back and listen to him. I mean, man, what a great singer he was. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, you know, he was another one of those that could could jump out and and was just a great singer but yet he could fall back and just compliment whoever else was singing and the blend was just incredible mm-hmm. you know and um um i tell you somebody else that I, that is one of been one of my favorite singers okay. just to listen to sing and wasn't necessarily a lead singer he did he did some but he wasn't and that's doy hot doy yeah. man doy made the statesman sound the way they sound that that his harmonies and his arrangements and uh you know a lot of people don't 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 know that doy did a lot of the arrangements and stuff you know when they're in the very beginning when when hovey was out doing the business stuff you know the guys were back at the motel rehearsing and doy yeah. was doing a lot, of, a lot of the arranging but just his voice is just tremendous um uh, and when he sang, you know, when he did sing lead, uh, it was just so unique. And it just, I, I just love his voice. I asked Hovey one time, I asked Hovey back in the day, Hovey and I were good friends. I said, Hovey, where'd y'all practice? Hovey said, we practiced in the car. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, we had to drive with the windows down from point A to point B. And he said, there was a lot of times when we were driving from Birmingham, Alabama on a Tuesday and he said, well, remember, we didn't have interstate, so we had to drive down two-lane roads to get to Biloxi, Mississippi, or Shreveport, Louisiana, inside of 24 hours. And he said the only place we had to sing was in the car. And, uh, you know, it took, I guess, that that would create a hardship in practices, don't you think? I mean, think yeah. about it. If you had to, I mean, I know you love Jeff and all the other guys, but I mean, you don't want to drive in a car with them in 90 degree heat through the Delta, through the Mississippi Delta and practice singing with the windows down, singing loud enough where everybody can hear their parts and, uh, you know, being the lead and saying, okay, we're doing it wrong here and there. What do you? <laughs> well, we, you've done that. Everybody's done it. You know, but, uh, if you, if you have to be in this business, you know, a lot of times you have to do what you got to do. But, uh, but you know, again, that goes back to you know what I was what I was talking about. You know, you had to you had to listen to the guy sitting beside you. You know, to make sure that that you were on cue and on part, and and make sure the blend was right. And if it didn't, you know, you change how you sang it to make it fit. And and uh, you know, it goes back to that thing of listening to everybody. It does. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Remember at the beginning of the show, I said. We're going to create a Arthur's All-Star Quartet. Anybody in the business for anything you could. And there's a lot of lead singers, male and female, we didn't mention today that we need to throw out there. Kelly Nealon, Clark, great, great lead singer. You know, she's carried the Nealons for years and continues yeah. to still do a great job. A lady I heard this weekend, and and I love her to death and her style, Jeanette Cook. I mean, oh, yeah. tremendous. Love the cooks. The cooks, love they're fun. Are they not love fun? Fa- love the whole family. Just love them. I, I told Charlie sitting here the other day, I said, if the boys were 25 years younger, they could go to Nashville and be the next Gatlin brothers with no problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course, they've always been that, man. They yeah. always sing. Man, they were just, they were, but they're just, just salt of the earth people. I mean, they're just great people. And and you know what else I'll say about the boys? I'm just picking at them. I bet back in the day, 
I bet if you did something to one of them at school, all three of them would get off the bus and just beat the tar out of you. Don't they look like they could probably handle that? I promise you that. I promise you that. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, another great female lead singer, and I know we're going over time a little bit here, but and she just had a very distinct voice, was Barbara Spencer. Yes. You yes. know, so, and and you can't forget, yeah. you know, you can't, can't leave for, out Karen. You can't leave yeah. out Karen. We yeah. can't leave out Jonathan Wilburn, one of the no. strongest that ever come along, and to have to come along after Ivan to do what he did. Yes, you know, absolutely. And, and absolutely. took a group from when it was a mega superstar group with Ivan, Brian, Mike, and Tim, went down a couple of year notches, but then here comes Jonathan bringing them back to the top, left his yeah. family group. I mean, so Dean Hopper's another one. Yep. Told, real underrated lead singer because he stands there next to a freaking nature voice and his wife, you know, and the yep. sweetest thing in the world, his mother, Connie. So, I mean, you know, it, you're right. A lead singer's got to be a great quarterback and a great, a great, great person. But I said, Arthur, at the beginning of the show, I was going to make you pick an all-star quartet. So, <laughs> here, here, I, now, folks, let me, let me preface this. I caught Arthur completely off guard. So, if he don't name you, don't. Don't give him a hard time, okay? <laughs> Just see him at Quartet Convention or see him at Dollywood during the Harvest Festival and push him to the side and say, why didn't you pick me, Arthur? I just want to know what I need to do to improve. And Arthur would be glad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Hey, here they come. <laughs> you're, so, you're such a nice guy, Arthur. i got to do it to you. Some people will say, I can't believe you made Arthur do that, Darren. Because you know they will. They'll blame me for it. Okay, They won't blame you. Hey, Gerald Wolf. We didn't even mention Gerald Wolf as a great lead oh, singer. Yeah. Oh, great quarterback. Yeah, I mean, great, great, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Ton, ton of my time. All star quartet, Arthur. Here we go. Here's the ladies and gentlemen. Drum roll, please. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Here's <laughs> well, the author. Right. Uh, I tell you, uh, somebody I've always wanted to sing with. It was Cat Freeman. Okay. For tenor. Yeah. And uh, of course, you know, I, I got to say Doy for baritone because I he just he's just my favorite. Yeah. Uh, and then for bass, uh, it's got to be Jeff Chapman. I'm telling you, the guy's a monster. Yeah. And uh, he, he's great, great singer, yeah. great singer. All right. And then, of course, you got to have Anthony playing piano. Anthony's got to play. We need to do a show on that one of these days. Has there ever been a better piano player than Anthony Berger? I, I don't know of anybody. I really don't. Uh, you know, I stood behind him, you know, for six years and watched him, and he was just magical. All right. You got Cat, you got Doyle, you got Jeff Chapman, you got Anthony on the piano. We're going to take you out of the way and say you cannot sing lead, okay? Because <laughs> okay. this is a lead singer show. We know you would want to sing lead. Who are you putting in that lead spot? Who's 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 driving the, the, the boat here? Oh, wow. That's a tough one. Uh, I'd, you know, I'd, have, I'd probably have to go with Jonathan Wilburn. Yep, good pick. Yeah, I, I, that's that. That would be that would be my pick. His voice uh, is just strong. Have you ever it noticed? Is, it, it's strong, and but he can blend. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, he can. He can blend with a chainsaw. You know. All right, let's pull Jonathan out for a second. Throw a woman in there to sing lead with them three guys. Oh wow! Wow, that's tough. <laughs> Well, you got you you got Cat, who you know sounds like Vestal, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow, that's going to be tough. Wow. Well, you need somebody. You'd have to have somebody like Kelly Kelly Nealon. Yeah. You know exactly. Somebody uh, like that 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 would blend with that. Well, here's mine. Okay, here's here's okay. what I'm going with. I've got to stay with you on one, and that's the pianist, uh, but uh, Anthony Berger, but. I, I think he's the best, but I'm going to be a little selfish here when I pick my piano player, and I've got to go with Hovey, okay, because Hovey, yep. Ho- Hovey was the uh, Joe Namath, Johnny there Unitas, you Bart Starr. You follow me? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Hovey, yep. Hovey could do that. that. That's number one. So I got Hovey playing the piano. Plus it gives you another vocal. Yeah, yeah. Probably not the best, probably not the best, but could read a crowd as good as anybody other than Jim Hamill in the business, okay? Absolutely. Bass singer, I got to be a homer and go with George. 
Johns. Just, yeah. just, just. I know JD's a close second, but I'm gonna go with George. All righty, I'm gonna go with George. Throwing the tenor out there, I love the mountain sound, so I got to go with Archie, Archie mm-hmm. Watkins. Mm-hmm. All right, baritone. Who do I go with at baritone? I'm gonna go with one of your old buddies. The big man from West Virginia. We ain't mentioned it today. Ed Crawford. Yeah. Because Ed just, you know more about Ed than I do. So if I'm off base picking him, tell me, Darren, you're off base. But I don't think I am. I mean, you just put him there. He, solid. He, solid. Do that. Solid. Yeah. And lead, I'm going to throw a curveball to everybody out there. Because Hamill said he couldn't hold his part, but he could sing lead. And you know who that is? Elvis Presley. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Could that could yeah. that quartet sell a few few albums? Uh, just a few. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that'd blend, but you know, you got George, you got Elvis, you got Archie, and you got Ed and Hovey over there telling them what to do. I can only imagine the conversations between Elvis, George, and uh, Hovey on stage. Oh, my. And Arthur just sit there and shake his head. I mean, yes. not Arthur, but uh, Archie would just sit there and shake his head. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, man, well, buddy, we could talk about this all day long, and it's been fun. And uh, you know what? Regardless, you know, lead singers are fun. I mean, it's fun to be one. I've been a lead singer in church. Never been somebody that could sing harmony great, but, uh, you know. So I guess that's why I'm more of a soloist. But you know what? There's a ton of guys we could put or ladies we could put in here. And, oh, if I'm going to put a, f- a female in there, i got to throw Chris Freeman in there, like I said. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to throw her in there. Yeah. Anyway, my friend, well, I appreciate it as always. Hey, that was fun. That was fun. It's always fun. Hey, do me a favor, everybody. Tell everybody to share and listen to Southern Gospel News Podcast. We're going to have fun every week. Got some great new stuff coming along. And want to remind you once again, Thanks to our underwriters, our sponsors, MyPillow. Remember, 1-800-338-2330, 1-800-338-2330. Use the code SGNP. Go on the website, pick what you want. Look at that code. Put SGNP in that code, Arthur. And they can be like you and I and carry their pillows everywhere. And uh, Right. They won't regret it. I promise they, you. They won't they regret won't it. Regret it. And they got, now they got them, uh, you know, they sell dog beds, too. Did yeah, you know that? My pillow sells that. dog beds. What about that? All right, I don't even have a dog. Arthur, got one question <laughs> for you before we leave. Is that all right? Yes, What's wrong with living right anyway? Not one thing. All right. Thank you, buddy. We'll talk to you soon on okay. SGNP. SGNP is excited you chose to listen today. If you'd kindly leave a remark and rating in the podcast remarks section, we surely would appreciate it. Please share with a friend or family member. Look for us on Facebook, Twitter, and our new website, southerngospelnewspodcast.com. And remember the Kia Summer Nights Concert Series, all 100% free, coming to a town near you. For more information on the Concert Series or to advertise your products, services, concert event, or new project on SGNP and reach a 100% guaranteed number of people in your area, call Tim Newton at 770-874-3200 or email him today. Team Newton at bgadgroup.com. Let us geotarget our ads for you, something radio nor magazine can do. SGNP is brought to you by Tocoa Falls College in Tocoa Falls, Georgia. For more information on TFC, call 706 886 7299 or visit them online at tfc.edu. That's tfc.edu. Since 1907, TFC, glorifying God through seeking and developing leaders who will impact the world for Jesus Christ.